Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Becca and this is my channel where I talk about all the houseplant things. Today we are doing another monthly favorites video because it is already the end of October. Every month I say it's already the end of whatever, but truly the end of the month always catches me off guard and then I realize that it's time for this video and it just freaks me out. The time really goes by that fast. I'm sitting here in my sunroom. It feels pretty warm in here today because it's a nice sunny day, but we are nearing the season where I need to bring out my greenhouse heater. I will probably talk about that next month and next month's favorite video because I always get questions about which heater I use in this room. I haven't had to use it yet, so hopefully, fingers crossed, I'll have a couple more weeks of warmth in this room. Also would like to give a big thank you to Casetify for sponsoring this video. We are going to start off with, I think this one. So this is my philodendron Florida, and this is a plant that I have honestly neglected hardcore for a very long time, pretty much since I got it. So it should be a lot bigger, but due to my neglect, it's not. And honestly, there did come a point where I actually liked the plant. And so I started paying more attention to it. And then because I started paying more attention to it, I don't know if it's like a bad luck thing, but I started like accidentally knocking off the growth tip of it, like every other leaf. <laughs> I'm normally not very clumsy with my plants. Like I'm very careful with them. But for some reason, this one, I just kept knocking around and somehow it came back from that twice, which is really exciting. So let me show you just a little close up of this latest leaf. Look at how gorgeous. This leaf honestly changed my mind about it because I just love how these little arms came out so long. It's so pretty. All the other leaves that it has put out weren't super remarkable. I mean, this one's pretty cool. This one's really tiny, but this leaf truly, I was like, okay, you can stay. <laughs> <laughs> You're a cool plant, I guess. So yeah, I'm just really excited about how this plant has shaped up and it's definitely been a favorite this month. It stood out to me, especially this month. And I feel like I need to give it something to climb because it's just sitting on a little bamboo stick to keep it upright. But I think that if I give it something to climb, these leaves might get pretty big pretty soon. And also I purchased this plant a long time ago from a Facebook purge page. And it was my first time ever buying from a purge page. And I thought that I was purchasing a Florida beauty. Don't know how I messed that up, but it's just a green Florida. <laughs> The Florida Beauty is still on my wish list. A lot of people will ask me what my number one wish list plant is. It's probably the Philodendron Florida Beauty. Moving on, I want to talk about some bulbs. So I was at Menards the other day with my grandma. My grandparents visited me and it was very sweet. Um, so we picked up some bulbs. She picked up some to plant for herself in New Mexico. We're not sure how it's going to work out for her, but fingers crossed that it does. So. I picked up these little bulbs. I love purple flowers. If you need to know anything about me, it's that my number one favorite color is purple, but not all purple, really just like purple that flowers can achieve. And then my second favorite color is green for obvious reasons. So anyway, I picked these up with my grandma. I've never planted bulbs before, but somebody who lived here before us did plant something and they came up underneath one of our trees, but they never bloomed. They just put out little leaves. I have to admit that winter here is really hard because it's so dark and gloomy. Everything is just really depressing. And then when those bulbs came up, just a little bit of green, it made me feel so good. So I knew that I wanted to make that for myself. So I need to get these in the ground like today or tomorrow so that they will be okay. But basically bulbs, you plant them in the fall and then they come up in the spring. And I think that you can remove them from the ground after they're done and then like hold on to them and they'll make more little tubers underground. And this one right here is an alium or alium. I don't really know, but it basically just looks like little onions. <laughs> it's really funny, but I remember seeing this at the botanical gardens um, the St. Louis Botanical Gardens when I went with Adam and Nicole. This is the other one that I got. It's a hyacinth, which is so beautiful. This was the plant that really like stole my heart last year. I think they're so pretty. Look at them. Oh my gosh. So funny that this one makes such a beautiful plant. The next favorite of the month is phone cases. So we're going to talk about today's sponsor, 
Casetify. I've had a Casetify case on my phone for probably a year or close to a year and it's the greatest thing ever. I always get questions about it. And one of the cases that I picked up this time is by the same artist. This is what it looks like. It's so pretty. I also got some custom cases. Casetify's new impact and ultra impact cases are made of 65% recycled and plant-based materials and the ultra impact case with the bumpers as you can see. They're drop protected up to 9.8 feet and I'm actually going to do a drop test for you so that you can see that in action. Okay, you can see my screen has no cracks, all in good condition. Okay, hi, can you see me? I'm up here <laughs> and I'm gonna drop it. Ooh. All right, there's where it landed. All right, she is still in great condition. These impact and ultra impact cases are 100% BPA free, 100% non-toxic and non-hazardous. And their cases have an antimicrobial coating that kills 99% of bacteria and prevents bacteria from sticking to the case surface. Also, since Apple released the iPhone 13, you're probably going to get it. So you should definitely protect it with a case to fight case. Or if you're looking for a gift for someone for the holidays, a phone case is just one of those universal gifts that will always be a good one. So if you are interested in checking out case to fight, you can head over to casetify.com slash plants to get 15% off your new iPhone 13 case. I will have that link down in the description box below as well. For the purposes of this video, I'm going to put on the plant case. Look at how beautiful. Oh my gosh, I love it. Okay, let's move on to another favorite. This anthurium right here is really having a moment. This is one of those plants that I imported early on from Green Spaces ID. And honestly, it wasn't looking good for a while. And then I switched out the soil. I did a little bit of repotting again and I added some cocoa choir to the mix because I just felt like it was drying out way too fast. And since I did that, I got this new leaf and I got a little new leaf on this offshoot. So this plant is fun because it actually did put out a baby right here, which I technically could separate, but I kind of want to keep it in there just for lack of space. But if Sunday eventually, hopefully in a couple months, I have a greenhouse, I will probably separate it and start growing it on its own in the greenhouse to see, I don't know, just how it does, how quickly it'll grow. And maybe that'll also give this mother plant like more energy to put towards herself because I think at this point the plants are still pretty connected, but it, ha it does have its own root system. So it would probably do just fine if I separated it. Okay, moving on to another plant I have back here actually. This is a Sansevieria Bantle Sensation and it was kind of hidden away in the corner like behind the camera and I never really paid attention to this plant. I honestly never even thought about it. I purchased it from somebody on Instagram and like my early days of Instagram, they turned out to be a really sketchy person and were like pretty abusive to people online. So I always felt kind of weird about this plant and I've kind of always thought, oh, I kind of want to sell it, but something always, or not sell it or give it away basically, but something always made me keep it. And I'm really, really glad that I did keep it because the new growth that it has put out recently is to die for beautiful. And honestly, I hardly ever see this Sansevieria out in the wild. So I'm, well, in the wild meeting at a plant nursery. So I'm really glad that I decided to keep it just for that alone because it's hard to find. I'm okay with giving away plants as long as I know that I could get it again. Like if you are in a situation where you're like, oh, I need to get rid of some plants, but I'm feeling you know, super attached to XYZ plant, I always think to myself, am I gonna be able to find th this plant again relatively easily? And if the answer is yes, then I'll probably just give it away then because if I ever feel like I want it again, I can just go buy it. But with this one, it's a bit difficult because I don't often see it. So I've been tempted to give it away multiple times. Actually, a couple weeks ago, I almost gave it away again, but I decided to keep it and I put it back here on this little spot and I think it looks really nice. It just breaks up a lot of the leafy shapes in the area and i think that it just looks really nice um right here as a little little background for my videos okay the next thing i want to talk about is my library card and renting books 
from my library card about gardening. So if you follow me on Instagram, I talk all the time about my library card and how helpful it has been to have a library card and be able to rent books, borrow books. It's gotten me to read a lot more than I normally would. I think this book this year, I've already read like 25 books or so since April, which for me is a pretty big deal because I did my degree in literature. So I kind of burnt out on reading. I had to read like, I don't know, let's say 40 books a semester, an insane amount of books. So I got burnt out and I didn't want to read for a long time after I graduated. But here, you know, it's been almost four years since I graduated from college, which is very weird. I've been reading a lot of like fiction and stuff like that, like on audiobooks and things like that. But also sometimes I'll read a physical book and I thought to myself hmm why don't I read some gardening books this winter so that I can feel even more prepared for actual gardening season next year so I started looking around specifically for garden books for people in Missouri I didn't know if that was actually a thing but it is so I would highly suggest you look for gardening books for people in your state because you might find some pretty cool information but i'm actually reading this on my ipad so i just preferred that for like the visuals i also have a kindle but i wanted to read this one on my ipad so you can see the title here there's a lot of glare but it's basically just gardening for people in missouri and i've actually already seen the author mention people who i know in the area like she mentioned a nursery owner that i know and i don't know i've seen a lot of familiar plants so Anyway, I'm just really excited to learn more about gardening in Missouri specifically and landscaping in Missouri specifically, incorporating native plants into my landscape and maybe eventually doing a meadow. I know that I talked about putting a meadow in. I'm looking for my meadow book. I have it in here. This book, I mentioned this book a couple months ago because I was reading it to see if it would be possible to turn some of my lawn spaces into meadows and I think that it will be possible. And I'm going to be heading down to the native plant store. There's a native plant store here in Missouri. I think it's in Jeff City. And they sell a lot of really cool natives. And I'm hopefully going to try to get a lot of seeds and stuff. Because I think that would be the most affordable way to create a meadow. But anyway, I think it's just really interesting learning about the land that we live on. And it's not something that has been particularly important to me before i mean i definitely knew a lot about the desert and i understood like the land very well but that was because i had always lived there and that's all i ever knew so i feel like coming here i feel so out of sorts about what all of these plants are you know i, I could name all of the plants around me in tucson but i cannot name everything here and i've gotten pretty good with tree id because of this little book that nicole got me but i just want to be I don't know, I wanna to continue to learn and continue to be a better steward of the land because I do own seven acres of property and I feel like, you know, that's quite a bit of space and I would love to treat it well and make it a really great place for the wildlife around me to enjoy it because we have a lot of wildlife around us. We live on wooded acreage, so obviously there's gonna be a lot of like deer and squirrels and raccoons and possums and, all of these things, but actually I've never seen a raccoon on my property. I've seen the effects of a raccoon because they got into my trash, but I've never actually seen one. And I think they're so freaking cute, but I haven't seen one yet. I've seen lots of deer. Sometimes we have deer that like come up to our fence and stuff, but anyway. So yeah, I'm just working on making this a more, I don't know, beautiful place to live, beautiful place to be in a natural way and not so much in a commercialized way. The next thing I wanna talk about, which might actually be the last. Oh no, no, I have two more things. This right here is a little pot of anthurium seedlings. So I potted them all in this little terracotta in my soil. They have been in sphagnum moss growing roots and they are ready to go for soil. The roots were probably about this long and I felt like that was time. Hold on, I'm getting a call. This is Mandy with All Creatures Animal Hospital, and I was just calling to let you know that Cooper's heartworm test came back negative. Oh, awesome. Thank you very much. Cooper is heartworm negative. <laughs> we were at the vet yesterday, and he was a bundle of nerves. He usually goes with Leo, and Leo comforts him, but Leo wasn't there. So, okay, anyway, back to this. So I bought these seeds from somebody online. His name is Jungle Berry on Instagram. It was like $50 for five seedlings or something like that, which I felt like was a fun experiment. And they all sprouted. One, two, three, four. Oh wait, no, no, 
four of them sprouted, one of them didn't. So anyway, I'm really excited to see what they will become. I think that there is some sort of crystallinum, I don't exactly remember, and I keep forgetting every time I mention it in a video, but some sort of crystallinum, and I'm excited to see them grow. Okay, the last thing that I wanna show you today is a microfiber cloth. Yes. Here's another case for watering your plants in the sink. When you water your plants in the sink, they're at, like, at your eye level, you've taken them somewhere, you are purposefully moving them from their environment, and I feel like it makes it easier for you to see when there's dust on them, okay? So I wasn't planning on saying any of that, but that just reminded me, I usually do most of my dusting of my plants when I'm watering them in the sink. So this is a microfiber cloth, it's just like some cloth that Daniel bought to clean his truck, and of course I stole it and I use it for plants. We have a bunch of them around the house. <laughs> and basically these cloths don't leave any lint on your plants when you clean them off. So I will either just use water or I'll make a mixture of 50% lemon or lime juice and 50% water. I will shine the leaves. It makes my plants look so good and I think that it just makes them so much happier because they're able to photosynthesize properly. They look better, they feel better. Everybody is just better when they have clean leaves. It's like, what can I compare it to? I don't know, it's like washing your hair. You know, maybe you don't need to do it every time you shower, but you should definitely do it sometimes when you shower. <laughs> Microfiber cloths are really great for cleaning off those leaves. You will be shocked by the amount of dust that comes off of them, especially these. Okay, so when I decided to keep this plant, I was like, I'm gonna give her a spa day. So I, you know, cleaned the leaves, made it look really nice. And I was shocked by the amount of dust that came off of those leaves because you wouldn't think that a plant like this would accumulate that much dust. Or like a ZZ, for example. ZZs accumulate so much dust. All plants do, really. So don't forget to dust your plants. Even when you don't see dust on them, make sure that you're doing that. But you could just do it the easier way by just showering them, like with your shower head or your kitchen sink spout. Um, but I think it's even more thorough if you're able to use a microfiber cloth or just a washcloth. Use a washcloth if you don't have a microfiber cloth. You know, don't make it too difficult for yourself. That's what I think about houseplant care and everything. Don't make it more difficult than it needs to be. Like the plant will be fine. I just use this because I don't wanna leave lint behind, but if you just have a washcloth, just use that, you know? And next time you're at the store, go grab one of these for like 50 cents. But you know, don't stress about it. Make it as easy as possible. Make the little lemon mixture or just use water, use the microfiber cloth or not but make sure that you are cleaning off your leaves, especially now because we're gonna need to get as much sun into those leaves as possible with the sun not being as intense anymore as we come into winter time. That is all for this video. Thank you very much for joining me on this little adventure. I had a great time hanging out with you and gathering up some favorites. I hope that you're inspired to check out your local library, get a library card, and I'll have some information about library cards in the description box below if you'd like to check it out. And also go plant your bulbs and wash your leaves and go buy a new phone case from Casetify. <laughs> Link in the description box below for them. You can use the code plants to get 15% off. I love my case, it's so cute. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.